this is the second part of the um, chapter B9 summary and we'll deal here with the anaerobic respiration first of all. So anaerobic meaning um, without oxygen and this occurs in the cytoplasm of cells. Okay, if you remember, um, if you think of a cell, here's our cell roughly, there's our nucleus. We've got those mitochondria. In fact, they'd be much smaller than this, but it doesn't matter. That's where the aerobic respiration happens in the mitochondria. Um, all this bit here, the rest of it is the cytoplasm. Okay, and anaerobic respiration occurs in the cytoplasm of cells. Pretty common question to be asked. Um, there are two versions of this you'd need to know. The first version uh, is what occurs in mammals, such as us. And like all of the respiration you'll come across, they all start with glucose. Yes, there are other things we could use. Glucose is the one that we tend to think of, or we'll, we use in these examples. It's converted into something called lactic acid. Now you might see this called lactate. It's the same thing, there's a difference. You don't need to worry about what it is unless you do an A-level, um, but you might see it used both ways. Uh, that's the version that's in your uh, textbooks, lactic acid. Okay, so that's it, there's just two, uh, two parts to it. Common mistake here is to throw in carbon dioxide, but it doesn't release carbon dioxide. Okay, you don't need to remember the um, formula for it, you just need to remember that. Now, lactic acid, is actually slightly toxic. It gets taken off to your liver, where your liver will break it down. Now, in the book, and it's slightly wrong, but it's what's in the book, so we're gonna go with it. What they say is that when you have produced some of this lactic acid, perhaps you're doing some exercise, um, you keep breathing in he more heavily after you do an exercise. You know, you think if you run 100 meters, you get to the end and you, you start breathing heavily at the end. And they say this is to repay the oxygen debt. I'm gonna put that in inverted commas. What it's suggesting is this oxygen is used by the liver to break the lactate, sorry, lactic acid down. Now the reason I put it in inverted commas, um, it, doesn't really do that it sort of does but not really it's in your book if you want to look something up called epoch which explains it in a bit more detail uh, you can basically the oxygen is used for other things as well um, it's about returning your body to its resting state and it can take quite a long time actually there's even when you think you've finished doing exercise you're actually taking in more oxygen than you think than you, you would if you just sat and rested for, for a long time but as far as we're concerned from here, the extra oxygen in your breathing and after exercise is used to break down the lactic acid in your liver. Okay. Um, anaerobic respiration does not release um, anywhere near as much energy as aerobic. So it releases um, some energy or a smaller amount, but it's usually fine. It's usually enough for short bursts of activity, perhaps up to two minutes. Um, and it it's, it's provides you plenty of energy up to that point. And what I suppose you could say is that aerobic and anaerobic are kind of both, if you're doing some exercise, both of these are gonna be going on at the same time. What changes is how much of each one. Um, so you might see a kind of graph with, um, Let's make ana aerobic in blue and anaerobic. We'll, we'll give an orange line, okay? So across the bottom, you've got the amount of time you're exercising. Um, basically, anaerobic uh, is quite high at the beginning, but it, it starts to run out and get lower and lower as you go along, but it's still there, running in the background, so you're still making lactic acid, whereas the aerobic starts off slowly, then picks up, okay? Um, this one allows you to carry on exercising for much longer. Still, if you go too hard, you know, it's like running a marathon and, and sprinting as fast as you can, the amount of lactic acid you will build up too quickly. You can't get rid of it quickly enough, uh, and that will cause your muscles to fatigue, which kind of means um, that they tire out. It's a bit complicated what's going on. There's all sorts. But if we say your muscles fatigue, if you exercise too quickly, quick, more quickly, your body can get rid of it. 
Okay, uh, the second type of aerobic respiration is also known as a fermentation, and this would occur in fungi, some fungi and, and, and plant cells. Again, it starts off with glucose, uh, we convert it into ethanol or alcohol and um, carbon dioxide, not put water, carbon dioxide. Again, just like with the aerobic stuff, it would um, require the presence of enzymes. So anything that destroys these enzymes in nature, the enzymes will affect it. If it gets too hot, this won't work. Um, and this ethanol is what we commonly call alcohol, but it's only one type of alcohol. Um, it is toxic. It will poison your yeast if you're trying to brew this stuff up. Um, once it gets to a certain percentage, it becomes toxic to the yeast. So you won't be able to get it above a, a certain concentration. Okay, um, and then finally, just on to metabolism in the liver. Let's find a bit of spare stuff. Let's go up here. Why not? Um, so when we talk about metabolism, this is really a kind of balance of all the reactions in your body, but it's a balance between um, chemical reactions that need energy and chemical reactions that release energy. So if you are um, releasing more energy than you use up, um, you, your metabolism is high, if you like. If you've got, uh, if you're releasing less energy than you, it's not a very good diagram, is it? <laughs> If you're releasing less energy than you're using up, your metabolism is slower. So if you wanted to um, lose weight, for example, you'd want to raise your metabolism, you'd do more exercise, and you'd have more of these reactions going on the aerobic and, and the anaerobic, okay? Um, what kind of things can be classed as metabolism? Um, well, as mentioned in the first one, you can store glucose in your body as glycogen, but in fact, you can make it go back the other way. This is what this arrow here with kind of two heads, that means it's reversible. So we can go that way or that way. Um, we can store, if you're a plant, you can store things as starch. Okay, and again, the reaction can go both directions depending if you want to store stuff up or you want to release glucose for more energy. Um, respiration is a chemical reaction that would come under metabolism. Uh, photosynthesis is as well. Um, actually, interestingly here, I say interestingly, uh, respiration is an exothermic reaction, meaning it releases uh, heat energy. And because photosynthesis is kind of the opposite way around, uh, photosynthesis is an endothermic reaction. If we look at photosynthesis, the formula for photosynthesis and aerobic respiration is kind of the same thing flipped around. So if it goes one way and releases energy, if it goes the other way, uh, it takes in more energy from its surroundings. And finally, um, just to mention the liver, I'm running out of space again, let's pop one down here. So the liver, this big organ sitting in the middle of your body. Get a better pen over. Just underneath your ribs. It's quite a substantial um, size. And the kind of things the liver does, it detoxifies um, anything in your body that shouldn't be there. So poisonous substances, alcohol being an example, it breaks alcohol down into something that is um, non-toxic. Of course, it also breaks down lactic acid. And this is where we come back to that thing of the oxygen debt we talked about. So we're going to put this as a formula, uh, lactic acid. Um, and then the, the oxygen is used, and this would be occurring um, in the liver cells, and it's broken down into um, carbon dioxide and water, two harmless substances. In fact, some of it can be turned back into glucose, but we're not going to worry about that. Um, the other sort of interesting thing your liver does is it breaks down old red blood cells. If you think of a bruise, so if you bruised your arm, there's an arm, and you get a bruise, and it goes that kind of um, sort of dark purpley colour at first, and it kind of goes a bit sort of brownish and, and yellow, um, that's red blood cells in your skin breaking down. And that colour is called by a substance called bilirubin, um, and that would be produced in your liver, and it's got a kind of yellow colour. How do you get rid of it? You pee it out, and that's what makes your pee 
kind of the yellow colour, it's your old red blood cells that have been broken down. It's not urea, which is actually um, pretty colourless. So, a couple of things the liver does, um, and that's it for B9.